All right, guys, today is Thursday, the 2nd of July. I cannot believe that it's July. Things are moving crazy fast, and, you know, the pandemic and all that. It's just a crazy world that we're living in. But anyway, today we're going to see over a few stories from a sefer called Kaych Ve'ar. Anybody can see that? Sorry. Kaych Ve'ar, which is a Brussels compilation of a few different books. And Svarim and small Kuntrasim that were put out by different uh, Zikne Breslov over the years. And there's a lot of interesting stories in here. So we're going to learn a story about the Holy Marsha. And also two, two stories that Rabbi Nachman said over. So I just did some research actually on the story because I was confused about it. And I looked online and I was reading the story that the Marsha was in Austria. And he was actually in the town called Ostrov or Ostra, which is in Ukraine. So it's also good to know that I did not make a mistake and I stopped the first video while I was making it because I was a little confused and now we're back in action. So, the story about the Marsha goes like this. In the times of the Marsha, the Jewish cemetery was next to where he lived in, where he lived in Ostro. The Jewish cemetery, where they had to bury their bodies, um, was next to a church from the non-Jews. And this church had very serious tumma around it and coming out of it and whenever the Jews pass by with a body on the way to the cemetery the non-Jews of the church would ring the bells and they would sing different songs and it would cause a lot of impurity and sometimes Jews were even taken in by the scene and they would leave Judaism and go to this church this was a big problem for the Jews and the way that it's written over here in the story it says that it's Tomal HaGoyim and when a Jew would go there because they didn't because they didn't have any other way to get to the cemetery I guess it was only one road so they would ring the bells and whoever went there Hamer Dasay Rahman Al-Tzlan he would lose his religion he would go against the Torah so it was it, there was a, there was a lot of Tumma there Something like more supernatural than just regular church, you know, there was something bad happening. So the Marsha said, because he wanted to fix this problem, because it was in his town. So the Marsha said that when he dies and they carry him this way, they should put on his body the work, the Marsha that he made, the Marsha, the parish, the Gemara, everybody knows the Marsha. And they did that. They put on his body and they started carrying him towards the cemetery. And then all the priests from the church came out and they started throwing the bells and do their stuff that they do. And they stopped and they put his uh, the beer, the, the thing that they were carrying, the marsha on. And the marsha sat up he sat himself up, even though he was dead, he sat up on the mita, and he started turning the pages of his own sefer. Very wild scene. And the church and the toma and the impurity with the men got swallowed into the ground. And everything got swallowed into the ground. And until today, there is a sign that where this church was was swallowed into the ground. So I cannot vouch for that, but it's printed here, and I believe it because I believe what is written in the Holy Swarm. But if anybody has been to the Marshall's Cave and can comment on that, if there is a uh, story like this, I mean, I read the story in other places, but I want to know where this Simon is. I want to go see it one day. That's a crazy story. Marsha is a very, very powerful tzaddik, even though people think like, you know, he's before the times of Chassidim. But Rabbi Nachman also talks about that there was big tzaddikim who were doing big nisim just with the Kayach of Torah, not even with, uh, you know, Tzerufim and Kavanas and Kabbalah. They were just doing it with the Kayach of, of the actual Torah itself. They would do big stuff like that. Anyway, now there's just two little stories that um, Rabbi Nachman told over. It's cute little ones. 
Nachman said in the, in the times of the Baal Shem Tov, there was a minagin, a klezmer, a person who played the music. He played at the at the weddings and stuff like that, and he was blind. He would play and he played at the weddings, and this was his and this is the way that he made money. And after he died, it became known that he was not blind at all, and he actually had very good eyes. But he did not want to look at women. I guess at his job because at the weddings and stuff like that so he made himself blind his whole entire life and everybody thought that he was blind but Oid and also there's another story of a of a, um, of a very very rich man Shehoya Kamsen Gadol who was very very stingy he did he he, he was like you know um, he did not like giving any charity at all he, he would not even give a piece of bread to Tzedakah. And everybody embarrassed him because of this. Right? And at, that, and at the same time, there was this one big Baal Tzedakah Godo that, that he took care of all the old people in this town where this, uh, where this rich guy lived. He would give them food and drink and everything, clothing and everything like that. And when this Gvir died, this Gvir who was a Kamtsan, who was a stingy Gvir, right, that everybody, everybody, um, that everybody embarrassed him, and the next day after he died, all the poor people came to, to, to the Baal Tzedakah, right, to get, to get their, whatever, their uh, food for the day, whatever it was. He says, I don't have anything to give you. Because why? Shahakol. Only be, I, basically everything that they that he used to give these people all came from the gvir, right? And he did not, and this gvir did not want to become known as the guy who gives all this money, so he did it through this bal tzedakah. It's actually one of the highest levels of tzedakah. If you look in Hilchus tzedakah, giving money without anybody knowing where it's come from is like the highest level. And he did not want to take any covet. Um, and he wanted the mitzvah to be clean without any pneus. You give the money to this guy. And everybody thought that he was his Kamsun Gadol. And he therefore he suffered because of this. And now that I, and, and, um, and now that he died, I don't have anything to give. And then everybody realized how great this guy was. The Baal Shem Tov said that this blind musician who wasn't really blind, and this Gvir who was a Kamsan, who wasn't really a Kamsan, they are on the same level, whatever that means. Praiseworthy are they. It's pretty praiseworthy to do that. You know what? Let's do one more story over here. This is a good story over here too. There is a story that Rabbi Nachman told over called the Tenda, Ver, Tenda Verenda, which translates into the Malbush Shelkaimer, the priestly clothing. The clothing of a priest in a church. What does this mean? What's the story about over here? There's also another wild story. Shepamachas, there was a rav. Shaholach lekabitz nedavis. He, there was this rav who would go to get money, to duck a money, uh, for pidyon shvuyim, for redeeming captives, or for hachnas kala, for a girl who needs to get married, an orphan girl, whatever. And he needed a lot of money. Ubalugvir echod. And he came to a rich guy and he asked him for money. And this rich guy said to him that he has in his house this malbush of a koimer. He has priestly clothing. That if he, this Gavira said to this Rav, this Jewish Rav, he said that if you put on this clothing of the priest and you go around all the streets of the city dressed like that, then he's going to give him all the money that he needs. And he did it. And he went. He put on the priestly clothing and he went around the city and he came back 
and now the rich guy gave him the money. The lakach mimenu a kesef hanitzrak lehatzdaka, and he gave him the and he took the money they needed for tzedaka. The acher kach, and afterwards he asked the rich guy to give him as a gift this clothing of the priest. The koydim petir asarav, and before the rav died, he put in his will that from these clothing they should make his tachrichin, the burial shroud, what he should be buried in. And he says that they left out one small part at the bottom of his foot, by his foot, that, that, that there was not enough of the clothing to cover it. And they made a piece of cloth from something else, not from the, from the clothing of the kaimer. And after many years... There was a reason that they needed to open up his caver. This guy, this Rav who died, who was buried in their priestly clothing except for one small part of his foot. Umatsu Shekol HaGuf Shalim. His body was completely intact without any rot. That one little part of his foot that was uh, that was covered by a different cloth than the priest cloth was rotting, but the rest of his body not. So that we did was very halig. This story was told. Sorry, this story Sipar Echad Meanchei Shemino Morenu Harapinchas Kibbutzer B'Shem Rabbeinu Harapinchas Kibbutzer, who was one of the tzaddikim, said this story in the name of Rabbi Nachman. The Va'amar Rab Avram Zal. And Rav Avon Bar Nachman said, that even though I did not hear this story from my father, the 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 Tulchin or Rav, but since Rav Pinchas heard it, then it's true. It's true. All right, guys. See you on Sunday. Um, hope you enjoyed those awesome, cool little stories. And next week we're going to continue learning Siyach Sarafi Kodesh and more stories. Hey, we'll talk a little about Uman this year. What's going to be with Uman, guys? What's going to be? Chaim.